Pussy gonna get him killed. Pussy is it ever? Is it ever? I read that. That's my my top note. <laughs> is it? That was just the deep cut. I was like, it, it didn't occur until it occurred. I was like, oh yo, is this where we started saying that? Because I wouldn't be surprised. Pussy gonna this, get him killed. <laughs> this is arc analysis. This is arc analysis. This, this is. Oh, canal. We are, we are back with a a sequel. Very special. This is a very special, very special episode. Because we're running it back. We like the runbacks. To our, we're doing that a lot lately, and I love it. I'm having so much fun with that. I hope you are too. I hope I, season I hope, two. I hope the five of you listening are happy too. <laughs> Six. If you go back to our very first arc analysis. I mean, class I mean, don't because we probably sound terrible. And I have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't sound that great now, but we sound a lot better than we used to. Um, so this is this is Arc Analysis number sixty three. Oh man! And we're finally getting back to Deadly Class, Volume Two, oh, Kids man. of the Black Hole, published by Image Comics, written by Rick Remender, drawn by Wes Craig. This was one of the first books. When I got, I always say this. I always talk about when I got back into comics in twenty twenty or twenty twelve. But this one, I just, this was, I was so proud of this one because it was like, I discovered this book. Yeah, like was, you love it. You love when you discover it. When you can yeah, it you know, You're like, because like, you just get into it, you see a little solicitation and you're like, oh, this comes out today. What is this about? It's like high school assassins. And I was like, right. dope. I'm okay. picking that up. So I picked up the first volume, the first issue. I mean, the first volume, like the, I still had the first, issue. first print of the first issue. Yeah. Loved it. And then I just went, not all the way, but I went to issue 25 or 30 something like that fair enough then i just stopped it was getting expensive i always talk about this but, <laughs> but I, I got it was getting expensive so i just cut everything off and i was just yeah. like and i'm done and in mirror parallel situations uh this is the book that coke gifted me and kind of got me back into comments and i would say like one of the initiators for this podcast like this is a book that mm-hmm. sat on my shelf for a year before i decided to read it and when i read it coke was like where you been bro and I've been collecting volumes since that. Like this, these are one of the books that I've kept up with up until. And I, I'm at like volume eleven, I think. It was and, now you, and now you've read more than me. Yes. And how the turn? How the turntables? <laughs> how work it, work it, DJ? Um, and and going back to what you were saying about like you you love when you find a book before anybody else it's the same thing like when you discover an artist and you kind of watch them grow and kind of you get yeah. to be on that first level that first wave of like i remember when you were dropping mixtapes there's a certain love of when you find a comic book or artist or like uh, like even a tv show before like the the widespread widespread audience finds it and this they... is, yeah this is there's this like weird ownership you take of it like not ownership of i own this comic but ownership like I discovered that. Like, I was I was there. I was on yeah, the ground was floor. There, yeah. yeah, we were part of the foundation. So loving coming back to Deadly Class because it forget the premise of it's just ass- that, but forget the premise of just like kids going to assassin school. They treat each one of these kids with a like a, a weird type of love because they understand their story up until this point with an amazing depth. And foresight and background, like they, like it's almost like they understand where this character has been years past to get them to this point to get them where they need to go. And I love the fact that it's taken place in the late eighties. Like that lends it fact to a lot of references that they give out there. It, it, it excludes the fact that like cell phones don't mean shit in this world because that would change the whole dynamic of it. But um, this is what I want my. Captain Planet and Planet Tears to look like, like they kind of they, they get they cover all their bases, mm-hmm. but no kid is clean. Like they're all kind of dirty. They're all grimy. They're grimy. And they went to school to get even dirtier, and they just keep falling deeper and deeper into that hole because they're still teenagers, right? Like they still get the fuck up like teenagers, and it's just flashbacks of like, oh yeah, like I fucked up this bad. Um, and uh, this and volume then, is continuing that journey of there, right? Yeah, and they're all they're all very multidimensional. You'll you'll see some people like one issue you'll, you'll hate this character, next issue you'll like this character, next issue you'll won't really like them, but you can relate to them. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of that with Marcus, for example. Like I, yeah. I find him such a you wouldn't call him a bitch, but he's not. He's a product of his environment. Like I always rep for Marcus. He's just dumb he's and he's, a bit he's of, full, yeah. and he's full of cum and yeah. he's very short sighted because the thing that he thought he wanted first. He doesn't get to later. I think he gets it in this book, and then he realizes he didn't want it, and he didn't know how to handle it. 
that's what I'm talking about though, because it's like there's there's some relatable things there. Like if you go back to like high school dank and coke, yeah, like I was just like I was just like him. Yeah. Like in 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 not sorry. That's not, let me rephrase it. I was just like him in certain ways. Like when it comes to like relationships with girls. Oh, I think it's not talking man, about like your pig face relationship. <laughs> no, no, I can just relate to him where it's like you have a girl that you finally got her, and it's like, yeah, but that, that one over there is kind yeah. of like me now. It's like, hmm. What if I no no yeah, I, you yeah, know this yeah. it's it's like almost almost like you want to ruin a good thing I don't understand what the the point of that is it's just teen angst I guess but and then he, the way he talks to himself in his head he's always really hard on himself and mm-hmm. I've always been like that so there's, there's a relatable thing but at the same time I kind of think he's a dick <laughs> yeah but again product of his environment there's a yeah. complete understanding of why he is the way he is and in this issue you get him handing over and I think one of his true gifts is like his journaling like the fact that he's yeah. been. That's a big. That's a meticulously big writing everything that's been going on in his life. He can now hand this over, and it, again, pussy dropper too, panty dropper, because he just hands over the book, and this girl's like, "Oh fuck, like you've given me something that you don't give anybody." Because this is a, mm-hmm. this is a school of secrets, and more than anything, you have to know who to trust. And throughout the entire series, it's I don't know if anybody watches Survivor, but at a certain point in Survivor, they stop doing full on. Um, what's it called when you click up? Uh, not squads, but uh. Clans, sure. I can't think of the right word. Until, I don't know. I only watched the end. first season of Survivor, and that was it. It changed. It used to be like you run with one team all the way to the end. But yeah. At a, at a certain point, they're like, you know what? We can like jump from squad to squad and choose the best one for me during whatever the ceremony is. And I started reading this book, and I was like, they. The, at a certain point, they start doing that, right? Like, there's a core group that you you care about, but at certain points depending on the danger and what's coming from them, they're like, we got to bring this person in or like, you guys got to go from this so we can handle this over here. And the complexity of understanding the dynamics between teenagers hanging out with each other, because you're going to hate people for if they sat at the wrong table at the cafeteria to we're all trained assassins. So I need your skill set. And this one specifically, like it starts off with Marcus hating one of the bullies and coming around and be like, I need your skill set with blowing up shit. Lex, man. And Flexi Lexi. Yeah, who I who was one of the characters I didn't like at first. And I was like, no, nah, this guy's dope, actually. This yes. guy's dope, actually. Yes. Because he's just popping off at, at the party. And I was like, yeah. And what, a great, and what a great scene, too, because you get to see all these different clans and tribes and groups. You see, because you remember it was like going to the high school party. You all clicked out and went to certain areas. And it was yeah. only... One or two of you, they're like, "Let me go branch out and see what's going on over here." It's the fun. Well, I was, I was, I was the floater. I was side bounce. So I had as, like, as was I, and I had like three or four different groups that I'd hang out. Well with. enough to like that a few groups are like we'll adopt you in, but smart enough to know like I can go somewhere else in this party and still have a better yeah. time than sticking with the people that I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, who the, but this was uh, this is a follow a direct follow up from the first five issues. This is issue six to eleven, and it deals with. Um, the death of Chico pr- primarily mm-hmm. and ghosts from Marcus's past. Yes. And they, they're they together because uh, Chester or Fuckface has <laughs> Chico's head, right? And so they're kind of like, we don't know what he's what, what going to do with it. What yeah. do with it. Yeah. He wants to, because Marcus is like, he, he, he wants to destroy me so he can through my girlfriend, Maria, since, you know, all the situ- the connection she has to Chico dying. Mm-hmm. having his no head right so and then chico's like family being hardcore gangsters in like in mexico so right you get rises of new uh new characters and yep. titular characters lex we talked about earlier shadnab shadnab yeah this is this is Marcus where he, Rube, kinda, he, he starts you, showing you, his true you, you see what he's in for right and again um you don't get mad at it you kind of have to understand the context of the school like this is what it is this is the monsters that they're trying to create um, this is also, you get to see Marcus, I don't say unhinged, but like outside of the school, like him working at the comic book shop more often. And That's that fun. great scene that what happens after his choices that are made, like that was hilarious. I forgot how funny this book is like still super dark, still like worth its weight in gold and like F bombs and just adult oh. material. <laughs> like, uh, they don't give a f- like the ones that they want you to hate, you're going to hate, um, whether or not you want to make rationales for them you can but i forgot how like charmingly funny it is because they're idiots like you're just yeah. watching kids just fuck up and the only thing they can do really well is execute each other 
<laughs> or well, double cross. Say, it's, it's funny. I usually I usually don't like angsty and over dramatic things, but the bits of the the teen angst in this, I like because more so than melodramatic, it feels confusingly real and nostalgic. Like it's yeah. like that's how I would react in a situation, and it's not really the best idea. But when I was seventeen or sixteen, whatever. I'd be doing the same shit. I'd be like, yeah. oh, I'd react like that. I'd be going cry. I'd be just making bad decisions, or you know, I'd be... to a point, you'd be doing the same stuff to a certain Not, point. Because yeah, we, I'm, I'm we... being vague because I don't want to spoil the, what I'm talking about. Because yeah, I'm not talking about like murdering people. <laughs> <I'm just talking laughs> well, we can't talk about that. We're we're in the Witsack program, so I'm just talking about being. In That's why we're called Dank and Coke. We can't use our real names. No, but <laughs> being in similar situations as certain characters here and there, right? It's kind of like, oh, yeah, like a bully in a party popping off. It's like, do yeah. you say anything or do you just let them ride? And it's like, well. Yeah, so like a good test of the character and like the archetypes that each character is going to never believe, like really lead into, you get to see Marcus's, I've dealt with bullshit worse than you. And his like backstory is heart-wrenching, right? So you like yeah. that he gets his comeuppance, but you kind of see who he is. And then you kind of see who, what's, not Maria's name, what's the other... Saya. Saya. You get to see who Saya is because she's kind of a protector. Like she, she's I'm smart, bit. smart enough to be like, this is not the fight you want to have. Like uh, you may not know who he is, but I'm going to pull you out of it. And then you get to kind of see her motivations too. There's a back and forth or a little triangle that, if you haven't been reading, you can finally see starting to develop, which is amazing. And there's a payoff for that in this book. Um, and then you get backstory for Maria and what's going on with. Uh, I'm just going to say Chico Clan. Because you yep. get to see her upbringing too, right? So I really love when an author can succinctly show me what a character has done in the past to bring them to where they are now. And this book is like deep with it. Like, oh, I say, speaking of that, I like that one issue. Was that oh, uh, issue oh nine, God. I think? The oh Orphanage? My gosh. Yeah. And then the payoff wow. to that, right? Wow. Like, yep. Because essentially they blame Marcus for the end That's result crazy. of that. But the twist at the very end? Yes crazy i was but like, like the, oh shoot the forthright of chester to be like i'm gonna have my moment where me and you get to roast this pig we'll say and uh man call him call, call him a psycho call him whatever you want but that, he's not stupid well he's the elf of the group right yeah chester yeah and like is, yeah and that, <laughs> and that family someone, like he makes someone literally eat shit so <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly there's a couple dunks in that straight from sin city but they fill the toilet this time um, th- this is like we talk about. You can redeem certain characters in this book, like that family. There's no re- redemption for it. Like they're they're painted specifically so you you buy into this ragtag group, my planeteers. So, like you want to see them succeed, but man, you could tell this is like one of their first missions off the bat. They're, they're oh, you talking about the team? Or you talking about the uh the rednecks? I'm talking about the team. The team. Because okay, because I thought you were talking, I thought you were talking about Rednecks. I was like, because that, they are like so, they're prepared, so far gone. They're hilarious. Like, it's yes. like, but, it's like, but you can tell that that's a squad that's been working together since day one. Because yeah, they yeah, know yeah. how to handle the situation Sorry. that happens. That's what I thought you were talking about the Rednecks. I was like, no, the Rednecks are pretty organized. They're disgusting, but they're yes. organized. And in the reverse, the people that you're cheering for. Because I like, at a certain moment, the book fades into, like, blueprints, and it shows what this is, how the plan's yeah. supposed to go, and I like how... Like, and it's it actually playing up. it. And, but it, do, it doesn't go to fruition, and then it's just like, okay, adapt, and man, that's some of the funnest issues in, like, I guess, 10 and 11, just flying through the seat of the pants to be like, who's this person? Like who's that. this person? Who's this person? It's like, you granny. Like, granny goes, <laughs> like, some off-color racist shit happened. <laughs> definitely happened. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> definitely yes. happened. Some uncomfortable yeah. shit, but the comeuppance are immediate. Then you're like, okay, cool. Like, the right the right people had to fall in order for the good people to survive or, you know, however. Yeah, it's it's goes. interesting how it's, it's interesting how in the first volume, there's a lot of Marcus and Willie. And this one, Willie takes a backseat. But they bring forth like Lex and the the, the triangle, right? Yeah, it's, it's more. Uh, well, I was gonna say the ladies, but it's it, it actually is more Maria and uh, Saya. You get to see their who 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 would you choose? I'm a Maria fan, man. Yeah, see that's see this is the thing. It's like I'm so Gemini about it. I'm just like yeah. Maria's crazy and that's really sexy. Yes, but then Saya's so like level headed, but she's and not chill. That I think I'd. Me personally, this is how dumb I am. I'm like, I'd probably work better with her, but Maria would be so much fun. 
like crazy. They, they're both level headed in different circumstances, right? Like yeah. Mar- Mar- Maria's the most level headed in the field. I like like she, that jealous that jealousy's hot though. Yes. <laughs> she got that fire. I already yeah. like I I'm not changing my pick. I'm just making yeah. Cases for both. Of I'm, just, I'm just gonna say Sai just to go against you because I don't really. I'm going to Well, I mean, you, you married a Saya. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. That's. Like, but I had a lot of fun with the Maria. Maria, you know I'm saying fair. like, fair. okay, fair. Um, <laughs> it's it's not an easy choice because at that age I'd be like I'm getting attention from both these girls and both these girls. That's what I'm saying. Couldn't run the show. Um, How do you choose? Like you just you're just gonna flip. Back and forth to whoever's showing you the attention at the time. Yeah, really, it, as like a as like a teenage male, so you're gonna. It's not uh, a show I watch religiously, but it seems like the nine hundred two one zero of it all, right? Like it's like the. Is that what it was about? I never. I actually never watched it. I just. It's just the one like, good-looking dude in high school who had the pick of the hot girls. There was a hot is that brunette, what it was about? and there was a hot there was a hot actually, blonde, right? Yeah. And uh, one season he'd be with the blonde, and the other season he'd be with the brunette, and the blonde and the brunette. Like, uh, at a certain point, they have to decide: like, is this dude worth it? So we're not there yet. Um, but in this issue, there's definitely a level of vulnerability from the women that you get to see who they are when they're not in a team and who they're not when they're in their clan. Because, again, other than Marcus and maybe uh, one other character, everyone is coming, everyone has a legacy. Like, they have mm-hmm. a past and a parental presence that proves to them that they need to be in this school. Marcus mm-hmm. kind of gets in, quote unquote, off a of scholarship. Mm-hmm. And uh, you kind of see in this episode how that scholarship he got it because <laughs> damn, and that's, and I... that's why that's why he's such an outlier to the rest. And to me, like even like when the group gets together, excuse me, when it's always like the school group, he always seems a little different than everybody else, and that's because he is right. Like you said, he kind of got in almost by sheer luck. Like it was just kind of like he got in. Everybody else. I don't want to say earn their spot because it's not really where you, it's not the school you want to be at, but they got in there by proper channels or lanes. He kind of got in by his own way and he's really not supposed to be there. Well, it's a finishing school, right? Like if you want to work with this gang, if you want to work with this uh, Yakuza, if you want to work with this uh, cartel, this is the school to sharpen your skills to make sure that you can run with the big dogs. And it ends on a damn cliffhanger that's like, you son of a bitch. I remember reading this. Uh, as single issues, and I was like, "Oh, oh you gotta be kidding me!" Because <laughs> those last that, that the first seven and eight, I guess nine are not so much nine, but seven and eight are very exposition, like very word heavy, like a lot of exposition, and then like nine, ten, eleven, it's bang, 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 it's like you're done. It's like, oh, where, that's it? Because because it goes so fast, right? And when right. when the when the, the the plan comes together and they try and take the fight to, to Chester, it's like, holy. Mold. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. And... Um, let's talk about the artwork and the paneling. This is not a pretty book by any means, and I say that because no character is drawn to the best look of them. Again, I've I'm the one that very much enjoys the variant covers that you get at the back of these issues because either through fans or through other channels, I guess other artists. That's when you see kind of the beauty of how other people are interpreting the, these characters. I feel like the artwork here is dirty and kind of it's messy ugly because that's the age that they're at and this is how we're looking at them we're looking at them so disjointed so like the paneling and the franticness of the pages and how like words pop off the screen really works and lends itself to that case in point if you go to the comic book shop when he opens late and he the kids are annoying and like just little ankle biters and just annoying and he decides to basically fart on one of them but it goes all wrong (laughs) <laughs> and he just rips a whole so, diary so load. The amount of uh, word bubbles that pop off the screen for like the long elongated fart, which is hilarious. But like the panic and sheer terror and ugliness of what you have to do now that you've just soiled yourself from your waist down to your shoes. To, your to the shoes, point that he, to your shoes that he's like butt naked by the end of kind of that run of like him just trying to clean himself off. It's it's gross. But you, you, one, laugh at it, you, two, feel for him, and three, you can't not keep turning the page because the way that they use pop color, the way that they, they mute things and then they increase certain levels. Like, there's, this is not a book that mixes uh, warm colors with cold colors unless, like, they're on a drug trip or, like, there's a bloody battle, right? They usually stay in one sort of monochromatic palette. 
so they're using it starts off with like a warm glow yellow and then it fades into like uh diarrhea green and yeah. by the by the end of it it's in black cuz he's just it's just him in a bathroom stall like trying to wipe his ass and getting kicked out right so i used to think this book was beautiful but i couldn't describe why it was beautiful it's because like the it's dirty it's messy it's it's a beautiful mess it's un it's almost unfinished no character looks complete or looks mm-hmm. like what they're finally going to look like it looks like they're adolescent age and as good looking as dank and coke are it was when high school when uh, we had like those awkward pictures right you're going through puberty like you're not sure about it you're figuring out your hair just I, trying I to pull I, it all I together look back, i look back at high school things i'm like man my confidence carried me a long yes. <laughs> long I, way back then i'm very happy i was a hilarious person because yeah. i don't think just on looks alone i would have been pulling yeah. what i got to pull um no no and no, then the humor the humor had them it's the humor that got them that's because it's so ugly and disjointed, when action comes in, that's when it kind of illuminates. So when they get to kind of that final scene and it's pops of oranges and Dutch angles, they start shifting the paneling, like squares start following. It's it's an amazing. Nothing should work as well as it does with this book, but this is one of the highest rated books that I will always talk amazing things about because it's so many things that just hits the nail on the head for me as a fan. Um of the series and just of the medium of comic books, right? Like they do so much with so little and understanding so many different dynamics and putting me back in a place where I wouldn't think about like high school as much as I do after reading this book or during reading this book and like caring about characters that I have no reason to. Like they're all filthy murderers, but you got, you got to love, love this family. You love them. You got to love this family because you're pulling for them. Yeah. So them. thanks to Coke, I stuck with it. And again, I, two more books before it's all said and done but I, and i stopped myself to be like i'm gonna start rereading it and so i was really happy that you put this back on the 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 google docs for us to review because i was like oh this is back in my wheelhouse because i love following these guys and it gets even crazier like the fact that i don't we're not even giving away anything on this book but it rewards you for staying with the characters and understanding their backstories and where they've come from because they go so much further than where you have expected. Um, yeah. we'll, and we'll, we'll bring it back. I got volume three somewhere in there, like somewhere down the line, maybe 20, 20 or so episodes from now. Like I, I assume I assume season three will probably cover, cover volume three. But um, God, do you have a favorite character coming out of this book now? I really like... I really like... This 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 art gave me a newfound respect for Maria. I really like Maria because she kind of shows some vulnerabilities here. She's not just this crazy like mouthy chica, right? She's right. like she has some vulnerabilities there, so I really feel for her. And she's uh, a boss too, right? She yeah. has that one scene where she it's her versus Victor, yeah. And Victor yeah. has to learn a yeah. lesson the hard way. Yeah. yeah, she knows how to. I really liked I really liked uh, Lex how he he kind of won me over fast. Yeah. Um. So I guess Marie's my favorite in this arc. Lex would be second. Some people like I they did nothing with Willie. They did Saya is in this, and you get to a bit more of her, but she's still a mystery box. Like it's mm-hmm. overall. So I was like, man, I gotta know more about her. Marcus is still Marcus. Um, the rest of them don't really get. Oh, Shabnam. You get you to see who he is. Yeah, yeah, you get. He's, a, he's a slow burn. Yeah, he's a slow burn. Yeah, but you kind of <laughs> see where they're going with him. It's like, oh, okay. I I won't say uh, favorite character, but like. To see Chester and Pigface and just his what he looked like before, what he looks like now, it's yeah. crazy. Um, his get his comeuppance, but just to see his family, I agree with you with Maria and just all of the growth you get to see from one uh, volume to the next. But I'm gonna see, I'm gonna say like Saya because as mysterious as she is, she kind of lets down her guard and she shows a bit, a little bit. She shows enough that like it kind of almost rocks the group. Because she, she finally lets in those teenage emotions, like mm-hmm. jealousy and envy and like want and taking things that you shouldn't want to take and the reasons why you do that. So I was like, you're way more interesting in this issue than you were in the first one. Because I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Marcus kind of they, builds they her up her, in the first issue. They don't. They just don't open her up like they open up Maria. And you can't do that. Or you gotta leave some. You gotta leave some breadcrumbs, right? So this is just not her volume to kind of super shine. Yeah. Yeah, but that's coming. And a big respect to Maria, who always shows up in war paint every time she's ready. Yeah, to... she, gets, she gets the yeah. la muerte, the makeup of the... Yes, Day of the Dead. 
So we don't we rank these on a good or bad boom, basis. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. boom. It's a boom. boom. <laughs> Which means it's good. I boom for good, ba for bad, and whoosh for we just read, but we already rated this, so. Listen, we're going to probably talk for another 10 minutes of all the stuff in the book we didn't get to talk about with you because we want you guys to go read the book. Catch up with us. This is something that we will keep talking about, but there's so much goodness to it, it's hard not to ruin it because it's just good. Like, how do I how do I say this book? This is this book. It's a special book for, for Comic oh. Patrol and Dang and Coke. A special uh, book. Keep us away from the TV show. I watched it already. Long time I, I only watched one episode, but it's we not may... horrible. But it's not. It's not. It's not what this is. So we may have to start a whole crowdfund um, and uh, crowd support to bring back the show the way it needs to be, which is like R rated. I think, they need I think, to put one, of, I think one of the worst decisions was they made um, Headmaster Lin like young, a good guy. Yeah, it's, show, just, it's, it's like, been a bit oh, long. That, yeah, changed, that of, changes yeah. the whole dynamic. dynamic show. Right. And they brought in a new character to be like the bad guy, which is like his his working partner. Was like, but then, at this, but then they kept something super accurate, like like Chester's in it. Yeah, and he's he's all yeah fucked up, right? And like Victor and your boy Victor's in it. It's not yeah. like there's like it's like oh okay, so what do you what are you doing here? You chose some things to really really keep accurate, other things to just kind of. For TV, and then it only lasted one season, so it's, it's too bad. But. but that seems like another episode because we can definitely do a deep dive on the TV oh, yeah. show compared to yeah. the comic book. Um, oh, but we're not okay. this one. Yeah. 